Good morning from Yami Bay TV. Wishing you all well, sending loads of love as usual. Like I promised yesterday, I get round to no biasness, no favoritism, right? No sitting on the fence. Uncle Yami finally delivers his hardest, most physically strongest men that I ever met who could have a row throughout my life in the K's and the B's, right? So I'm not going to mince my words today, right? It's probably going to be 15 or 20. I don't want it to go on too long, right? So the first one I'm going to talk about, his name is Matthew Thomas, right? He's from East London, a well-respected figure, dark geezer, looks kind of intimidating, looks physically strong naturally, if you get what I mean. He looks got some kind of strength, even, even when he ain't training, that kind of stuff. I never spent a lot of time with him. I heard a lot about him before I met him. And when I finally did, it was in a local jail in London, right? One night, he refused to bang up. There were four of us left out. We was all running about doing our things. All the rest of the doors were banged up, right? So... He needed to go on the freeze for some reason. I didn't ask him why, what the problem was, but he was refusing to bang up. So three officers came to him. So they must have been weary of him. And he said, look, Thomas, you've got to go back to your cell, mate. It's bang up. And he said, no, 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 no. I've got to go up there on the freeze. I've got something I have to do. You're going to all have to wait. No, no, no. They start to try and crowd him a little bit. Bang, bang, bang. All three of you out on the floor. Right, I've never seen a geezer so calm and collective and just carried on with what he was doing. Done all right, up to the two stairs. I think we know where we are, you lot. Right, goes on to the twos. You remember, he wants to go to the threes, but now the bell's gone, so you know it's more coming. You remember, it's late in the evening as well, where other wings are being banged up as well. So they all start pouring through the twos gate. Instead of going up onto the threes, he carries on walking towards the twos, towards them. My days. Listen to me, three or four of them hit the deck again, right? On the floor, right? No trouble whatsoever, no exaggeration. They were all out of the game. The bell was going, they were still coming from the ones. Now they were coming from the threes. Now they were coming from everywhere. He was walking backwards from the twos, right? To get to his destination where he wanted to on the threes. When he got from the freeze, because all of us were being held, they were trying to get us all into one cell. But where they were so confused with what was going on, there was only one or two screws around us. So we was going, no, no, no. We was playing up kind of thing, just in case anything happens and we might have to be witnesses for Matthew, right? Same thing. They will come pouring in more and more of them. He still had a terrible, terrible go. Uh, in the end, you got him down, but you, he didn't make one sound. You were jumping on his head. He was doing everything to him, right? I, you know, there were stories afterwards that you might have even injected him uh, and made him go a bit funny, right? But that's a different story, right? But that gives her there. Anyone that ever wanted to go, no, no, everyone was absolutely terrified of him. And he was a nice geezer as well. Imagine that, man. He wouldn't trouble no one. But when he blows, when I say blow, this is like a, a bomb going off. Trust me. That's my first one. Right. Remember, this is in no particular order uh, until we get to the very end, if you get what I mean, right? So I'm just going to go through my names the way that I'm going through them. So don't think about what I'm saying. If you're taking it this way or that way, I'm not sitting on the fence with nothing anyway. Fuck it. Right. Next person, Kim Farrier, cage fighter from Croydon, Fortin Heath, right? Knew him when he was a little kid, right? Remember I told you the story about Kim, Lee Murray and that uh, when, when they were younger and I was older, uh, that kind of stuff. Now, I see this geezer, right? And he was super fit as well, super strong. I see this geezer take on three geezers with my own eyes, right? He's brilliant in holds as well, as well as having a big, big, big punch, right? Three decent names, if you get what I mean. It's a London thing, right? Uh, but he done all of them, all of them tapped out, right? So that I give Kim Farrier, that's all I could talk about. I ain't got permission there from Kim, but I put him as one of the hardest men that I ever met in this lifetime, because he could do a bit of everything. I remember when I was younger, when I used to have my physique, he used to say, one day I'm going to be like that, you know, Uncle Yami, you know, like that. When I saw him years later, he was more than that, if you get what I mean. And he can take a blow as well, if you get what I mean. So Kim Farrier goes up there as my second one, right? 
I put um, Warren Slaney. I have to put Warren Slaney in my top lot uh, because he took on everybody and won nearly all of his fights. It doesn't matter which way round it went or how it went. Most of the time, he does give you a chance to fight, right? As far as what I saw. He confront you, he'll look at you, he'll call it on. Da, 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 da. If you don't want to fight him, sometimes, all right, you might want to shy away from what you did to him and you want to back out of it. He might not have it and he might still lick you down. But he took on all comers all over a lifetime. And there are many, many men that believe that he was the greatest of all time, right? As a short man as well, like five foot seven, if you get what I mean. So in no particular order, I've got to mention Warren Slaney. There's loads of stories about him up there, right? Uh, but I do not put Warren Slaney as the greatest of all time from what I saw throughout my lifetime. But I put him as one of the greatest, if you get what I mean. So, you know, if you want to know more about Warren Slaney, he's on my channel, right? Fourth person I'm going to talk about, Carl De Dredd, from East London again, right? Um... This geezer is so swift with his hands, with his fists. Every time, because he backed me a couple of times on things I didn't want him to, right? Every time he seemed to have a fight, it looked like he used to come out of the cell with no marks, with no nothing on him. Like he was just coming, he'd just been for a stroll in the park. He was very, very, very clever. Serious, serious, seriously, seriously, man. I remember having him having a fight with two geezers, right? And at the same time he was fighting with them, he was talking to them. He's throwing his left and saying, yeah, you remember when that happened? Yeah, in 19, blah, blah, blah. How did you feel about that? He was winding up the person even more. And then he was touching another. Wow, this geezer is lethal. Uh, I put him at the top of the tree, mate. Carl the Dread. Yeah, he's in there as well, right? One, two, three, four. Five. I'll put Tomo. I have to put Tomo from Manchester, Lancashire. I have to, because of what I saw, right? Now, with Tomo, I only saw two or three fights, but his personnel, the way that he carried himself, none of his fights lasted long. You know what I mean? And he could bob and weave. And he was strong. And he was fit. And he could move up and down weight. He could do all sports um, well, proficiently, if you get what I mean. From for everything that I ever saw, from people throwing punches at him and from him doing that, from doing that. And then the two times that I saw him just, you know, someone else throw a couple and then he would throw his and you would spark out, right? So I never ever saw um, him get harmed either during fights. But I would have to say that I would put him up against most, I'm afraid. You know what I mean? Like it or lump it, some of you, but I know he's a well-liked man anyway. Uh, but I certain things that you ask me, right? Who can win out of this one? Who can? I do have visions in my mind. I do believe on certain days that I believe that that one could have that one and that one could have this one and that one. But it doesn't mean I'm right. Do you see what I mean? But I do lie down and I think, nah, nah, nah. It wouldn't be that way uh, with, with certain. That's how I see it. But again, it's only my opinion. But I put Tomo in there as well. Now, also, one second. From Nottingham, right? I have to put in Ezra Taylor, danger. I have to, right? The Green Mile, right? Many underestimated that size because uh, he's a gentle giant. He's not a bully. He doesn't pick on anyone. Uh, but the day, the day that I saw him do 20 of those screws um, and completely wiped him out, right? They were trying to be, trying to take the piss out of him. And there's only so much a man can take, right? And again, with with danger, he used to always say, <laughs> I'm not even gonna, I better not say that, but danger used to say to me, yeah, I mean, why doesn't my man like me? Does he really think that he can beat me? Because he struggled with him. But to me, the person that he struggled with, I would just blow over just like that. So why does, he, does, why does he think that he wants to have a go at me kind of thing? Because in reality, uh, I was thinking the same. I, I, I was looking at it that you had two fights with a guy that Danger would have wiped the floor with. We're not going to say who it is. We're not going to get into the politics of it all. But Danger, a decent man, very intelligent, but physically supreme and doesn't have to do that much. But again, if he blows... 
I can't see how he can be stopped. So that's that one there, right? All fair and square, I've got to say um, Kevin Lane as well. Uh, Recognised, rated uh, by many, many that spent many, many years with him in the K's. He had some of the quickest hands that I ever witnessed in my whole life and he won most of his fights, could bob and weave and was super fit as well. No bias there, I don't care no longer who gets on with who and who doesn't. That's not the life that I lead now. You ask me the questions. I deliver, I, I tell you to the best of my knowledge, to the, the truthful, the truthful, the truthful talk like I always do. And Kevin Lane is a household name in the Cat A's. And believe you me, he could have a right, right row, right fact. Now, we get round to, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, bloody hell, yeah, I mean, that's 10 minutes. All right, keep going. Colin Gunn, right, Colin Gunn. Azada's nails, right? Fit as well. Uh, could do a bit of both, physical and wrestling, if you like, kind of thing. I saw two things that I told you about already that was very, very a uh, bit of light work for him over somebody else as well. I'm not allowed to call their names, of course. But you know what makes me laugh, right? I'm not sitting on the fence today. But you know the question of Colin Gunn versus Warren Slaney, right? Warren wouldn't really look to fight Colin Gunn, right? For, for whatever reasons, not fear, maybe because he respects him or whatever, because Warren did respect certain men and he would listen to. But if you're going to ask me personally, would I ever believe that Warren Slaney could win a fight with Colin Gunn if they went behind the door together? I would have to say Colin Gunn. But it doesn't mean that I'm right. Because all of us know that all it takes is Slaney to land one and it could be like Goodnight Vienna. Do you see what I mean? So Colin Gunn goes down as one of the hardest men and fairest and very generous as well and realistic and will tell you straight to your face what he's thinking and what he's saying. No shrinking violet. One of the hardest men that I ever met. Right. We're just going to get round to you now. Um, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> come on, yummy. Right, all right then. We'll switch back up to Sam Cole from Liverpool. I put Sam Cole as one of the hardest men and the calmest, coolest men that I ever met in that lifetime. And I only met him a couple of times, if you get what I mean. But the two fights that I see with my own eyes, right, uh, he completely ripped them off, right? He was super fit as well, and he was seriously dangerous. But another one, he, he don't do nothing to nobody unless you trouble him. Bit like, like, say, like we was talking about Albert Redding. He's not a man who's going to walk. Sam's not a man who walks around and threatens people and and and, and says he's going to do this and going to do that. And he doesn't like if he dislikes someone or he doesn't think he says it to your face or whatever. But he's not like that. If you get what I mean, he's good at weighing up certain things and that. I never spent a lot of time with him, but he goes down as one of my hardest men that I ever met with my own eyes in the cat a system and he could bob and weave as well all right remember the stories i've told you a couple of times where punches were thrown at him and he just did that and he just did that he's a very very tall man as well so i put him up there as well i'm afraid like it or lump it right well i think he's, it doesn't matter about it. i don't know what i'm saying that for because you know at the end of the day he's well liked and well loved probably the most loved scouser that ever existed right where do i get to now right so we get to the nitty gritty of it all, right? Andy Shacks, right? We go back to Andy Shacks. I find it very difficult to believe on a one on one that there's many that can win that battle with Andy Shacks. You ask me, right? I'll tell you straight up and down now. Andy Shacks versus Warren Slaney, they're best friends, they're good partners, they respect each other, they love each other. But in a straight and if he was asking me who was going to win that fight, hand on heart, what would I think? What do I believe? I believe that Andy Shacks would win that fight. It doesn't mean that I'm right again. You know what I mean? But my mate Warren, I'm not putting it down. I'm, I'm not doing it that way. I'm not sitting on the fence today. It's my belief that Andy Shacks had more power uh, in his hands, in his physical prowess, with his fitness, with all things combined together, 
Uh, Warren, again, if you land first, anything's possible, blah, blah, blah. But do I believe that Andy Shacks and Warren Slaney, if they had a fight, I would be, I, I'm in my heart of hearts, I might want Warren to win, but in my heart of hearts, I believe that Andy Shacks would win that fight too. And there's many already that I've mentioned that I think on a one-on-one, -on -one, I think Andy Shacks would win those fights as well. Uh, but it doesn't mean that I'm right, of course. Because, you know, it all depends on the day we're talking about. Right, we get down to, right, John Gray, right? Now, I will put John Gray up against anybody in his lifetime, right? Because he could use his fist. He's got he's a glass region, uh, naturally, and a Manchester, both at the same time, if you get what I mean. Hold on one second. No, I can't answer that for now, right? John Gray, right, is a physical beast of a man. Right? A real physical beast. Right? So whether it's that, 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 that. I could tell you three names, but I don't want to say it from Manchester, where you had to go in the cell and they got cheeky and you had to wrap them up. But I liked all three of them and I had to leave. I'm not going to mention that today, right? We know about the tumble dryer, the washing machine thing. We know that that's fact, right? That same guy that you put in a washing machine knocked out a well-known geezer called Wayne. I'm not going to say his full name from Manchester. You thought he was a simpleton, but he knocked you spark out. Uh, but he was light work for John, if you get what I mean. So John with that, but then with that and that and that and that. When he grips you, oh, for effing hell's sake. I have to put him near the very, 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 very top as well, right? So that's John. That's John Gray, right? Say no more. I'm not on no favour. I'm not sitting on no fence or nothing. Right, we get round. Oh yeah, yeah, the other thing as well, I was gonna say to you, uh, John got, was respected everywhere as well, but again, figures that I've mentioned already in my heart of hearts, what, how do I feel if he went behind the door one-on-one -on -one with those? There's only one or two that I think I would have a few concerns that could last a little bit, but it could get really ugly and nasty and that kind of stuff. But the majority I would expect him to win, but again, it's only my opinion. We get round to Tony Argent, right? Respected by love, respected and loved by almost everyone in the prison system because of the truthfulness, the reality, you know, the, the way that he talks, the way he breaks things down. You heard a man on the interview the other day uh, talking about him. Now, listen to me, right? Oh, God, why did I mess leave the message anyway, right? Tony will never back down from anyone, not during that life, right? Uh, everybody knows it as well. No one challenged him, right? There were words exchanged at certain times with a couple of those names that I've mentioned today. And he replied back and then there was no tone. Da -da 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 but he won't let you get the better of him mentally. Very good for, for you lot to understand that. Others were just going, yeah, all right, sweet. Like, you know, because people test the water. They want to see how far you, but he knows uh, what you're going to say, what you might come with, whether you're testing or whatever, that kind of stuff, right? And on a couple of those, those moments where people were there, the response from Tony was quite clear. And we all knew what it meant, but you didn't say nothing. So in the physical row, I'll put him up against anybody, right? Um, as well as, you know what I mean? Tony was a bit different from some of those as well because if things were going to be that serious in a row or whatever, or whatever he was thinking or whatever, depends on his frame of mind back then as well uh, with Tone. Uh, but, you know, he will pick up things. There'll, there'll, there'll be a bloodbath at the end of it. Uh, and that's how he used to live his life, thankfully, not, not no more, if you get what I mean. But a very, very serious man who goes over the other bit that others won't dare tread. Because it's all right having a row, it's all right just having a straight and see who wins and blah, blah, blah. Today we're just talking about fighting. And I know for a fact that he can hold his own against anybody. Right. Now. Hold on, let me see if I've forgotten. Have I, have I dropped anyone out? Let me try and think it through quickly before I get to this last bit. Right. The greatest of all time 
in my opinion. And it is vouched for by many, many men out here uh, that met from all areas, right? What I saw with my own eyes inside and outside of prison, the greatest of all time was Bill the Bomb, Django, Billy Williams, right? From Callington. I don't care what anyone says. I'm not sitting on no fence with nothing. Everything I saw from this geezer, right? Um, everything I saw from Bill, rest in peace, my boy. I haven't seen from many men. I told you about the cells, five men, six men, whatever. We know about the SPGs where he cleared, he went nuts one night in that pub and he come out, he cleared two vans out. We know these stories are absolute facts. We know he went in the ring with Muhammad Ali. We know that he was a raving lunatic at the best of times. He never even used to eat. He used to stay up days and days and days and still hold his strength. Uh, like, like someone I know, like I was a smaller version, but not on that level, if you get what I mean. But throughout everything that I ever saw throughout my whole lifetime, I'm still waiting for somebody to give me somebody that I say, for all those men that I've mentioned there right now as a start of this, if you go in a cell or you have a one-on-one -on -one with Build a Bomb, there's none of you that I expect to win that fight. So that's the difference, right? And that's my hand on my heart. You know, someone say, yeah, but yeah, I mean, do, 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 do. whatever, say it. I don't care. I'm telling you, in this lifetime, for a man who never looked after himself, <laughs> you could call him all the names under the sun. Natural ability. Natural brute strength, trust me, uh, Build a Bomb was the greatest of all time. The other name I forgot to mention, now that you brought it up this morning, of course, a couple of weeks with Lenny McLean, right? Now, rest in peace, Lenny. Now, uh, whether it was Brixton or Wandsworth, I can't remember which one it was, but it was in the local jail. Um, he had two fights, right? He did not run no wings in prison, Lenny. He struggled to do time, or shall we say, he didn't feel at home in prison, like, say, a man like me. Maybe he had, low, he had the outside, he had businesses to control, he, he couldn't handle the headache or whatever. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But the Lenny McLean I saw for those couple of occasions, it, it definitely wasn't what you lot were talking about on the outside, even though he was, everybody knew he was, said hello to him, didn't want to mess about with him, still knocked out a couple of geezers uh, and said, yeah, you'll be drinking soup for a week. Um, uh, good night, Vienna. Yeah, that was another one in the cell. Yeah, that was over somebody else's argument. I might tell you that story if, 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 it's, if it's worth it. But the truth was, there are a lot of big names that go to prison. They, they don't really handle Bird that well. I don't know, Lenny might not have been well around about that time, but I think he was all right because it was after the Hippodrome thing, remember? But he didn't feel at home there. I don't expect men to feel at home in prison, but, you know, he didn't take to prison too well, if you get what I mean, if I could put it politely that way. But did anyone say anything? Take liberties with him, try it on with him? No. Did he back a couple of people and lay a few couple of people out? Yes, he did. So I think that was the other name I forgot. But I stick to my guns. I stick to my guns. The build a bomb, as far as I'm concerned, was the greatest of all time. See you soon.